This video will be concerned with cumulative free, uh, frequency plots. It's a straightforward video, uh, should not cause too much problems, uh, but it's worth refreshing and making sure you are clear about what's meant by a cumulative frequency plot. So this is a way of uh, to display cumulative information graphically. It shows the number, the percentage or the proportion of observations that are less than or equal to particular values. So it's, it's a way of looking at uh, the distribution of data within certain categories and trying to work out what proportion of the observations are equal to or less than a certain value. And that's really the use of a cumulative frequency plot. So frequency versus cumulative frequency. Well, in a, a data set, the cumulative frequency for a value x is the total number of scores that are less than or equal to x. So it's not looking at the frequency of x. It's looking at the total score for the number that are equal to x plus the ones that are less than x. So it's counting all the way up to that value, including that value. That's what we mean by cumulative. It's adding up. Cumulative, it's counting up the early ones until we get to the value that we're, we're dealing with. Now, the difference between frequency and cumulative frequency. Let's look at two charts. And both charts will show the amount spent on petrol by households or over a given time period in a certain town. So here, for example, is, uh, is a frequency uh, distribution. On the vertical axis, it ranges from 0 to 100. And on the horizontal axis, where we've represented the horizon horizontal information in uh, the information just on top of the individual uh, charts. And here's a cumulative frequency distribution. And you can see it's more stepwise. Uh, the one on the left is more uh, more symmetrical in a sense. It's it's more uh, some less, some greater, and it's got a uh, an average value or a median value, which is quite high, or a modal value, which is quite high. But on the right hand side, it's more stepped. Now, in the chart on the left, the one just above this uh, column here. The column heights show the frequency, the number of times people bought petrol uh, in a time period in the town. For example, about 20 households spent between 11 and 20 pounds on petrol in that time period. So if you look at the frequency here, about 20 people spent something between 11 and 20 pounds. If I just put the, the cursor on the screen for a second, um, over here. Now, if you look at this one here, it's about, I don't know, about 28, 29, maybe 30. About 30 people spent between 21 and 30 pounds on petrol in that time period. So what this graph is showing us is <clears throat> the number of people who spent a certain sum of money on petrol in a given time period. Some people used a lot of petrol and spent a lot of money, 91 to 100 pounds, but there were very few of those people. It was about maybe 30 something of them, if we take it across 30, 37, 38 of them. Uh, maybe there were taxi drivers or people engaged in transport of some form. In the chart on the right, <coughs> excuse me, the column heights show cumulative frequency, the number of purchases up to and including the last purchase. The chart on the right shows that there were 170 purchases of at most 80 pounds and 
430 purchases of at most 100 pounds. Again, if I can just put the uh, cursor on the screen, we can see here 430 of at most 100. So here it's cumulative frequency. We're adding up the early ones to the later ones to find out how many purchased up to that figure. So uh, up to 430 people spent a hundred pounds on petrol. And that's the difference between frequency and cumulative frequency. Frequency counts can be measured in terms of absolute numbers or relative numbers. For example, proportions or percentages, which are relative numbers. The absolute and relative frequency charts are based on the same data and have the same pattern. So it doesn't matter if we're dealing with relative or absolute. We're dealing with the actual figures or the relative figures. We should get the same patterns. Here's the absolute uh, frequency and here's the relative frequency. And you'll see the two are the same. Uh, the, the one on the right, we're just simply calculating um, all of the the numbers in terms of a, a maximum of 100. So we're making 430 equal to 100. 255 is therefore equal to 80. So it will be 255 divided by 430, which will give us 80. Next one's 170 divided by 430, which will give us 60. So if we, if we trace this across, we get those figures. And you can see the actual distribution remains the same. So we get the same outcome, the same conclusions, whether we use absolute or we use relative. Now interpreting <coughs> uh, relative cumulative frequency. We'll say this is a examination results for a statistics class. Now let's find the median. Well select 50% uh, on the vertical axis. So we've got 50% on the vertical axis. This gives us a score of 62. So we take 50% here, there's the 50%, trace it across, uh, it hits the um, distribution here, take it down, and it's 62%. This means that half the students receive a score of at least 62, because some receive less. And this is a, a cumulative frequency um, chart. So some receive 20, some receive 30, and so on. So 62%, if we add up all the figures, all the students, we find that 50% of them uh, get 62, at most 62. Half receive a test score of at least 62. Therefore, the median is 62. That's the middle. So with the cumulative frequency curve, we can find out the middle score quite easily. Uh, the 50% get more than 62, and 50% get 62 or less. Now, for concrete and continuous variables, well, concrete variables can be counted. They have values that are distinct and separate. The data can only have certain values. For example, the numbers on a dice are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So a dice has got six sides, and those are the numbers on the dice. They are discrete. We, we haven't got one and a half on the dice, or two and a quarter, or 3.6, or 68%. These numbers do not appear on the dice. There are six faces on the dice, each one has a number, and they are distinct, they're separate. And the data can only have those values. If we're using a dice 
for some sort of statistical work, those are the only numbers we can have. We can't have the number seven. It doesn't exist. The dice only has six faces. <clears throat> the number of members of a family is distinct. Uh, we can count them. Uh, there may be uh, some adults and some children, and we just count them up. We don't have three and a half adults and 4.2 children. So in any household, it is discrete. The number of books on a shelf. Um, we can't have five and a half books. The half book doesn't exist. It's either a book or it's not a book. So again, it's a discrete variable. The number of languages spoken. <clears throat> well, either we speak the language or we don't. We may have complete mastery of the language, or we may be just beginners. But it depends on how we measure the language and our competence in speaking the language, our, our ability to speak the language. Either if we set up objective criteria for measuring our ability to speak a language, and if we pass it, then we are classified as speaking it. If we fail, we're classified as not being able to speak the language. We may know a lot of words and a lot of expressions, but we may be deemed as not proficient. Now, continuous variables, uh, well, the continuous variables can be measured. They can have any value, however, within some interval. We can measure them, but um, <clears throat> they can fall anywhere along a line. They're more continuous. For example, uh, we may have six, uh, 0.62 litres of water to drink. We don't have to drink one litre, or no litres, or two litres. That would be, in a sense, like discrete, if we had to, if we're constrained in that way. But with continuous variables, the number can be 0 0.627291, etc. We can have, it's, it's a continuous variable, and we can measure it. But it's, it's not restricted to integer values. The heights of students in a class can vary. They don't have to be um, so many centimetres, 50 centimetres or 51 centimetres. They could be 50.279 centimetres. They can be any, any, any number. It's a continuous variable, but it can be measured. But the discrete variables are restricted to integers. Um, the dice can only have 1 to 6 inclusive. It can't have 1.5. There is no, no such value on the dice. We can't have 3.5 people in the family. We have 3 people or we have 4 people. We can't have 3.5. The speed of a car is a continuous variable. It may be in miles per hour, it might be 60 miles an hour, or in kilometers per hour, it could be 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, it could be 101.2 kilometers an hour. It's a continuous variable. And this should be borne in mind when we approach um, looking at statistics and the way we look at distributions. So remember that the difference between discrete and continuous is important when we go to measure uh, variables. We need to distinguish between the two very carefully. But that's all we're going to deal with in this short class. Uh, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.